Sub brands are all the rage this year. We've got BYD with Yang Yang, Xpeng with the upcoming Mona, and now we've got Neo jumping into the fray with this, the Onvo L60. My name is Elliot Richards and welcome to this exclusive behind the scenes. I want to find out if Neo has what it takes to crack the mass market with this, the Onvo L60. So let's find out what it's all about. Now I don't know about you, when I first saw this car in spy photos or official photos, I thought it looked a bit ungainly looking, but here in the flesh, it really just works in this beautiful mustard coloured studio. I quite like these. It's still has that Neo DNA, but it takes it in a kind of different direction. There's lovely design touches down here, this brushed aluminium in the lights. It says Onvo LED Tech down here. Obviously the slippery body takes you back here. Very good looking wheels. I've got the cameras around here, frameless over here. And again, this side profile reminds me a little bit of the Neo EC6. So it's kind of got that same uh, design back here, especially back here. Come around the rear, it's much more striking, I think, the L60. This is the all-wheel drive version, so it'll be very fast, basically, when we get to drive it later in the year. And again, it's distinctive that it's from the Neo family, but it's slightly different, slightly tweaked. And I do quite like this integrated spoiler. It makes it look a bit more sporty and racy. Not sure about this. That's a bit overkill. But yeah, you have to let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is a car that's been under development for about three years now, under the code name Alps and it's called Envo, which means on voyage or on voyage if you're French, basically means pleasant journey. And this is a family oriented car and it's going up against the likes of the Tesla Model Y, which is now in China long overdue for an update. So I'm gonna take you through the top eight most important features of the Envo L60. First one is aerodynamic. Now I love that manufacturers are taking this more seriously because they should. And because of 10 years of knowledge passed down from Neo into the Onvo L60, this has some really subtle nips and tweaks around the car which make it really aerodynamic. So this has a drag coefficient of 0.229 CD which is lower than the Tesla Model Y and lower than the Tesla Model 3. And they've done that through obviously this SUV coupe style body but things like frameless wing mirrors here, the integrated spoiler into the boot there, all these little tweaks give it an efficiency of 12.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, making this a very slippery car. Now charging is probably one of the most important aspects of buying a car from the Neo family because you get access to the Neo charging network and the swapping stations across China and now across Europe. That's obviously very important and is a real selling point against its competitors. And the Onvo brand will also enjoy those benefits of battery swapping in Neo power stations. We don't know the full details just at this point in time, but there's lots of rumors floating about the internet of what is gonna be possible in the future. But the most important thing is the cost because having a Neo car means you can then lease the battery, which should drive that price down even lower. So there's a price range which has been said from about 200,000 to 300,000 RMB, but with battery leasing, they might even drop that price even lower. I'm just speculating at this point, but this becomes a very, very attractive proposition if that becomes reality. Interior. You're gonna to have to bear with me on this one because I've been inside, but I can't show you what's inside. So just come on me with this journey as I relay the information to you about what it's like on the interior of the car now. It's described as a city oasis, extremely comfortable and extremely spacious. Gone is the central display in front of the driver, much like other Neo cars. It's all on the shared infotainment screen, 17.2 inches horizontal in the middle of the car with a really thin bezel around the outside. And then gone is the gear selector, typical to Neo cars, and it's on the indicator stalk instead, so up down for your drive modes, much like many other cars. The interior is kind of like a, a mesh up between a Model Y and a Neo car and it looks fantastic. It's very minimalist. They're using the same Karoon material on the dashboard, the sustainable material. And I have to say the back can seat very tall adults, 283 centimetre adults in the back with loads of legroom. And on the, the roof is a massive glass ceiling, again, giving it lots and lots of light. So I have to say that it's a, a very, very good interior. Battery. Forget your stinking 800 volt architecture. This has 900 volt architecture. 800 volt is so like using a VCR. 
in 2024. This is the standardization of these premium luxury features which are filtering down into more mass market models and I'm all for that because it means we get faster charging times and this will come with two different battery sizes which are not the standard Neo battery sizes. So I think they have 75 kilowatt, 100 kilowatt, 150 kilowatt in a Neo car. This will have slightly different battery sizes and probably different battery chemistries, LFP, NCM have been rumored on the internet. But the most important thing is that this will have the battery swapping. It will have the ultra fast charging with that 900 volt architecture. You're likely to get full range from 10 to 80% in just 20 minutes. Lots of speculation at the moment. But when you consider, you get all of this for the price. So let's move on to the price. So we know it's going to be between 200,000 to 300,000 RMB, which puts it square in the mass market against all of the other competition. It's so intense that it's the most hot part of the market, but the market is becoming more mature as people's budgets get squeezed. People are fed up of gimmicks, of pointless features they don't need. This comes with all the features you do want efficiency, battery charging, super fast speeds with that 900 volt architecture, battery swapping, luxury, comfort, smart, tech, it's all in this car for that price, which for me is mind blowing. Driving, now of course I haven't driven this, we're on the industrial estate on the outskirts of Shanghai, but this has something called the cloud comfort chassis. And if it's anything like any of the Neo cars, which I expect it will be, it should be sublime. And this is in a market which focuses on ride quality, but not to the level that Neo does with their new ET9. There's been lots of videos of how good that suspension system is, and just the whole ride. So I expect this to follow along the same path. For me, the most important point is probably family. Now this car is centered around family and Lee Bin himself has said this is a family car. Now I think that's really important, but it's not just a, a PR tagline which says, oh, it's a family car, no. This goes much deeper than that. This has something called Oecotex materials on the inside. It's passed as some sort of certification, which basically means it's not smelly, not harmful for children. All those nasty new car glue smells are completely gone. But it doesn't just stop there, the safety as well. You think, oh, okay, they've packed all this in and so maybe they've forgone some of the safety considerations, but oh no, they're aiming for Chinese NCAP, Euro NCAP, and to be safe for US driving regulations as well. Whether they actually go there, who knows? So this will be much like the other Neo cars, fully five-star rated, and that is a good thing for the family and a good thing for the brand. And the last point is self-driving. Now, I remember when I drove one of the early Neo ES8s a long time, almost six years ago now, one of my first videos that I ever did. And at the time, it didn't have much in the way of self-driving, but here we are six years later, and the affordable mass market model has the same self-driving capabilities as the top of the range Neo models. It has something like 30 LiDARs and radars equipped around the car, giving up to 370 meters of of LiDAR vision. But what's most stunning for me is that normal thing on these mass market cars, well, normal for the Chinese automakers, and that you can get a car for that price range with these self-driving features, again, is a, another very attractive point against some of its legacy competitors. When a car company says they're gonna jump into the mass market, you do wince a little thinking, oh, are you really sure you want to do this? Because it's so cutthroat in China at the moment in 2024. But with Neo's entry into this segment, I think there's a, a new player in town which really gives the competition a lot to worry about. Packing all of that Neo loveliness into the Onvo L60 should be a winning formula, but only time will tell if the mass market is ready for a car like this.